Hey guys, my name is Joshua Waters from the channel Sharpshooter JD, and today I will be doing some whip cracking for you, as well as talking a bit about the anatomy of a whip, the different parts of the whip, and how it actually cracks. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I really hope you guys enjoy. Now I have done a whip video in the past, but that one was just showing um, some different cracks and sequences that I've been working on. And like I said today, I really want to take a moment to talk about the anatomy of a whip and how it actually cracks because it's really, really fascinating. Um, and I'll be doing some more whip cracking for you guys as well because I haven't done that in a long time um, and I really enjoy it. So I'll start with the anatomy of the whip. Now this is a 12th plate nylon bull whip. So it's made completely from 550, from nylon 550 paracord that's been gutted. And it all starts with the pommel or the heel of the whip. And this is generally a crown knot or a Turk's head knot. And this is sometimes filled with lead to change the balance of the whip or to add weight. And uh, on a bull whip like this, this is actually what you hold on to. Um, it kind of rests in the palm of your hand and uh, makes a nice grip. Um, for other whips it's different, but uh, for a bull whip, um, that's the most comfortable way to hold it. We have the most control. Um, and after that we have the handle. And I believe on this particular whip, this handle is a steel rod or a steel pipe. Not exactly sure. But each whip type has a different type of handle. So this is a bull whip. So you have a stiff handle that's about a foot long. And uh, these handles are generally made of metal. And then you have a snake whip um, that doesn't have a stiff handle at all. Um, you would literally grip it right on uh, the transition into the whip itself or the thong of the whip. Um, and this makes them a little bit more difficult to crack, but it allows them to be coiled up very tightly to put in pouches or in a pocket. Um, so they're much more portable. And then there's whips like stock whips that have a much longer handle. Um, and these handles are generally made of wood and are sculpted um, to fit your hand very nicely. And then moving on from there, we have um, the main body of the whip, which is called the thong. And uh, what you see here is just the topmost layer of the whip, uh, which is called the overlay. Um, and as you can see here, um, there's six strands of black and six strands of green um, nylon cord. And this makes it a 12 plate whip, a 12 plate weave. And uh, again, this is just the overlay that you're seeing. Underneath this, um, there's what's called a core, which can be a wide range of different materials. And then on top of that core, there are generally braided bellies, which are basically smaller versions of what you see here um, on the inside. And there can be multiple bellies to whip. I'm not really sure um, exactly what this one has inside, but there's at least one belly. And sometimes between bellies, there's uh, what's called a bolster, which is generally a triangular shaped piece of material that decreases the friction between the bellies and uh, adds a bit of durability to the whip and uh, increases the overall diameter of the whip uh, when it is completed. And the function of the bellies is to give the whip its density and its shape. Um, so they're very important. And then moving on from there, you can see that as the whip continues downward, it's going to drop um, strands from the weave. So it starts with a 12th plate um, weave. And then as you go down, you drop strands um, to help this tapering process. And there's also stuff going on on the inside of the whip, which is helping it to taper as well. Um, so as you can see here, we're still at 12 plate. And then right here, it's gonna drop to a 10 plate. So two or four of the green and six of the black still. And then it's gonna drop again to eight down here. And then eventually all the way to a four plate. And this is gonna help that taper of the whip. And this is really important. I'll talk about that more later, why the taper is so important. And then we have what's called a fall um, and attached which is, this is just a piece of 550 paracord. Um, and then attached to the fall, we have what's called a cracker. And this is what actually makes the sound of the crack um, of the whip. I just made this from some paracord guts and it's working pretty good. I like the sound of it. It's a bit high pitched. So I think I need some more um, volume in uh, the end of it. So maybe I can add a couple more strands uh, to get that. And I think it'll be a nicer sound, but it's cracking pretty good. And um, I just made this with a counter twist, how you make bowstrings, also called a Flemish twist, I think. Um, pretty simple to make. I might do a tutorial on that one of these days. So now that you know all of the different parts and pieces of the whip, um, we'll move on to kind of the physics behind it, what makes it work. And I'll try to keep this as brief as I can. Um, but basically, 
um, the taper of the whip is what generates all of its power. So the traditional crack, or the, the first crack most people learn, um, I believe it's called the circus crack, which is basically just going up and then back down. I'll show you what it looks like. Scoot back a little here. So up and then back down. Um, so I'll explain kind of what's happening. Um, and it's not that complicated really. So as what's happening is I'm bringing the whip up here and then as it's coming back, I'm throwing it forward, which is creating this loop. And this loop generates speed as it rolls down because it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter until the cracker finally breaks the sound barrier. So it's how that kind of works is you're putting force into the handle of the whip. And this is a pretty heavy handle. So you're putting force into this handle. And then as that force rolls down the whip, the whip gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And so that force is exponentially multiplied um, until you get to the cracker and it accelerates it so fast that it can break the sound barrier. That's probably not the best explanation ever of how it works, but I hope that makes sense. It's an incredibly fascinating tool and whips are just absolutely amazing. And uh, I'll have a link in the description if I can find it of this slow motion video of a whip cracking. I can't remember who did it, um, but it's a really, really cool video and hopefully that'll explain um, kind of the process better because you'll, you'll be able to see that loop forming and that force kind of rolling down the whip and then ending in that cracker breaking the sound barrier all in slow motion. It's really sick. So I'll try to find that. I'll, I'll probably link that in the description down below um, if you guys are interested in that. And also if you're interested in my last whip cracking video where I kind of show you more of my cracks and sequences, um, you can check that out on the screen. It'll be up here somewhere. Um, there'll also be a link to that in the description down below as well. So I hope you guys learned something and um, I think it's about time for me to shut up and do some cracking. So let's do it. So there you go, some whip cracking and a bit of an explanation about how the whip works and uh, the anatomy of a whip. Also, um, I got some comments on my last video that I'm cracking too hard, I'm putting too much effort into my cracks. And I do know that and thank you for those comments. They were completely accurate. Um, this whip is pretty stiff and pretty short, so I do have to put a little bit more power into it to get it to crack. Also, I'm just not amazing. So um, I will work on that. Thank you for those comments. And if you guys are new here, make sure to check out my channel. I have over 100 videos on a few different topics like slingshots, primitive weapons, metalworking, woodworking, all kinds of awesome stuff. And I do videos like this, like weapon tests, informational videos, builds, tutorials, all kinds of neat stuff. So go check that out. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. And I think you're really gonna enjoy my content. And if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like or a comment down below. Also, if you have any questions or feedback, of course, leave them in the comment section down below. I read every single one and I answer almost every single one. Um, so do that if you have any questions or feedback. And of course, don't forget to check out the description for more info and um, links to all, all of the stuff I was talking about in this video. Make sure to check out my other whip cracking video. I'll have a link somewhere on the screen um, now for you guys to check out. And uh, with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.